Hi, it's Tom, and in this video, uh, we're going to continue with the card box tutorial. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put the card box control in a um, card game called War. Uh, the purpose of this is uh, just to try it out, not necessarily to test it. Our last application was, you know, testing the various different aspects of the card box. Um, what this is really all about is just making sure it's actually suitable uh, for a card game type application. So to begin with, I, I created the card game war without controls. Uh, this is my basic visual design. You can see here there's a group uh, of controls. Uh, this is the human group. Uh, there's space for the card control I can add. Um, there's a label around this vicinity here that will show whether the human won or lost. And uh, there's a win counter for the uh, human player. Um, and then there's another group uh, with similar types of controls uh, for the computer player. Uh, and the basic premise of the game is that the... Uh, user clicks on draw, it'll draw two playing cards from a deck. I'm using my uh, Tom Cards uh, 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 class library for this. Display the results, and it'll keep on cycling through until there's no more cards to deal. Um, then it'll prompt the user to res reshuffle. So we'll, we'll run this to so you can get a sense of what the program actually does. Okay, uh, so it starts off like this. I click draw. Uh, tells me the three of hearts and the nine of spades. So the human is lost, the computer is one, and my wins goes up by one. And if I keep on doing this, you can see, by the way, this is not something I showed you in the, uh, um, this is in the dealer class, card dealer class, uh, but there's some debug text that I'm generating as well that shows uh, what's actually being drawn from the dealer object, which is kind of neat. But at any rate, that's uh, uh, neither here nor there for another tutorial, perhaps. Okay, so I keep on cycling through. Um, eventually, I'm going to run out of cards in the uh, dealer because I've only lo loaded one deck in the dealer. And uh, you can see here it prompts me to uh, reload the cards, yes or no. So if I say no, basically nothing happens until I click draw again and it asks me again. And if I say yes, um, it basically resets. It still continues with the wins in, uh, uh, for each uh, for the human player and the computer player. So if I start playing again, it it continues on with the same scores. But um, that's basically the way that uh, the program works. So we'll look a little bit at the, uh, there's the GUI and the properties I set for the GUI. That's fine. Uh, but let's look at the actual uh, code here. Okay. Uh, perhaps I can make this a little bit easier to read for the moment. Okay, so you can see I've got my comments at the top. I've I've actually uh, sorted and uh, removed my unused usings. Uh, I do have my attribution. Ultimately, I don't have them yet, but ultimately I'm going to use those images, so I have to make sure to, uh, to give credit. Um, there's a number of fields and properties that I've used uh, currently, and these are actually t temporary. Uh, I've created uh, two playing card objects, computer card and human card. A um, couple of integers and the card dealer object for generating the playing card. So those are my all private fields. Uh, when the main form loads, it sets the computer wins and human wins to zero, and it creates a new dealer object. Okay, so the way the dealer object works is uh, that you uh, pass it a deck, and true indicates that there should be some do jokers in the deck, and how many times or how many of those these types of decks you actually want to load into the card dealer. So I want to just use one deck. Uh, so that essentially initializes the, the dealer. So I've got a shuffled set of cards that I can deal with. Um, most of this stuff is in the button uh, draw click. Uh, I declare some strings, uh, win, lose, or draw. Uh, those are just constants. And uh, as long as there's at least two cards remaining in the, in the uh, dealer class, a dealer, uh, card dealer object, um, then I want to draw two cards. If they, obviously, if there were less than two cards, I wouldn't want to do this because I would be generating an exception, right? So I draw each card using the draw card uh, method of the uh, dealer object. Um, and that's what I set the human card and computer card to. Um, I update uh, the text of the, uh, the two group labels. Um, I figure out which one, which card was the winner. And I'm using my uh, playing card operators here that I overloaded. Um, so when the human is a winner, for example, uh, I increase the human wins by one. Uh, I display them. Uh, obviously, the uh, label result for the humor uh, for, for the um, human player is win. 
uh, I turn that blue. Uh, for the computer, it's lose. I turn that red. And then I do similar types of things. If the computer wins, obviously it's the computer uh, that goes up by one. Um, and then if it's a draw, uh, basically I just say that it's a draw. I turn the, the color to dark text. <clears throat> okay, so that, that's displaying uh, the results. Um, if there weren't two cards, I want to do something different. So this, this else goes with there's less than two cards. Basically, I show a message box. Do they want to reload it? Yes or no. And if they say yes, then what do I want to do? I want to load the card dealer. I want to turn the two cards face down. Uh, that in this program so far has actually no real effect, so I'm not actually showing the cards. Um, I set the, re the uh, result labels to blanks, and I reset the group labels um, so it's just human and computer. So it looks like it's ready, ready to go to continue playing again. Um, so all in told, it probably took me about uh, uh, 20 minutes to come up with this game. It's a little bit artificial in the sense that, um, uh, you know, I probably would have had the card box control uh, to begin with. I wouldn't have developed the game this far along without using it, but, uh, uh, but I, digress. I digress. This is where we're at. Um, so let's say the situation was... Uh, uh, one of my teammates on my team was developing the actual control. I had to develop the game logic, so I went ahead and, and did at least this part. Uh, now we have both of those elements and we want to merge them together. This might actually be a realistic scenario for your uh, D, uh, Durac uh, team project. So we'll flip back over to design view. Uh, I'm going to open up my toolbox and I'll just pin it for now. Um, now, I don't actually have the card box control here, so I have to add it. I'm going to go to the uh, general category, and I am going to uh, choose items. Okay. Then I am going to uh, browse. I'm just going to navigate to where my um, Tom Cards, uh, no, it's not, yes, it is Tom Cards uh, project, but it's the uh, card box. Um, sorry, the card box project in, in the Tom Card solution debug. Anyways, it's t can't believe I did that. <laughs> card box was the one that I wanted. And then OK. OK, so once I've done that, there's my card box um, uh, control that I can simply drag or however I want to do it onto my actual form. OK, so there's uh, uh, card box one, I suppose. And uh, card box too and I'll just spend a couple of seconds here playing around with these okay uh, yeah that looks good about there I guess line those up ah darn it I'll take those two I'll just nudge them up a bit and that's about where I want them to go okay so I'll save that I'll run it and of course, these are not really attached to what's going on, so we'll we'll fix that part of it. Okay, so we'll uh, unpin my toolbar and um, save everything, and let's go into. Oh, actually, before I do that though, I want to uh, give these things better names. So uh, I'll just go into uh, properties here, and I'll change it from card box one to. Let's say uh, card box uh, human card. Okay, and I'll do the same thing here with uh, card box two, CBX computer card. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to go. I'll flip over to the code. I'll lose the properties windows here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually <clears throat> not going to use computer card or human card any longer. Okay, they were basically in there. Now I don't need them anymore because I have the card that's part of um, the actual uh, control. Okay, uh, the alternative I could do is I could actually leave them in there and then simply in my draw click, I could just, after I've actually drawn the two cards, I can set the card. Actually, let's let's try that. The, the, the simplest way to do this would be to leave them in and uh, simply say my uh, uh, computer card dot card 
equals um, computer card, right? Uh, CBX human card dot card equals human card. Okay, so that will more or less work. Uh, we'll run it, and at least for the gameplay uh, portion, it'll work. Okay, so we can see I'm actually seeing the cards now, which is awesome. Okay, end of the deck, reload cards, yes. Now this is a, a little bit of a problem because it doesn't actually flip those over, which is what I wanted to have happen. Okay, so at any rate, that was one approach. I'll comment those out. And let's use a different approach this time. Actually, I won't just comment the boat. I will get rid of them altogether. Um, so the different approach is I'm not going to be using these uh, two objects at all. Okay. Now, once I comment those out, I'm going to get a pile of errors. And this is, this is actually going to help me out because it's going to show me where I need to actually change stuff. Okay. Uh, so human card uh, should be replaced. Okay. So I'll highlight that. Uh, with combo, oops, or CBX, card box, human card, dot card. Okay, uh, CBX, computer card, dot card. Okay, and then I just take that all the way through. I'm going to deal with the human card one first. I'm going to just take that, copy it, see if I can... I don't actually have to say card to string. The control to string would be fine for that. Uh, human card card for the comparison. Uh, human card card for the comparison. And then human card. Uh, I don't need to do card face up. I can just say face up, but the control face up. I think I've got them all. Let's deal with the computer cards ones then. Okay, so I'll just copy computer card card, and I will replace that. I don't need the dot card there for two string. Computer card in the comparison. Computer card in the second comparison. And computer card, I don't need the dot card for face up. Okay, so uh, let's test this out, see if I got them all. Okay, so, so far, so good. Draw. King of clubs, king of clubs, queen of clubs, queen of clubs. Win, lose, makes sense. And I'll keep cycling through. Until I get to the end. End of the card, so I want to reload the deck. I'll say yes. And you can see I actually see some face down cards now. Okay, so uh, very quickly, I was able to add the uh, the visual element of playing cards using my um, user control uh, uh, playing or uh, card box prop uh, library. Sorry, I'm really tongue tied today. At any rate, um, so hopefully you found the tutorial uh, useful, and you're, you'll be able to extract some uh, some good nuggets out of that for your own final uh, project, which is a card game as well. Thank you very much.